Welcome back to our study uh, in the book of Psalms, and uh, we are nearing the end of Psalm 119. After this lesson, there are just two more, and uh, we want to get right into this. This is all about the entire psalm is about the Word of God, and we will be looking at two more octets uh, in verses 129 to 144. As far as an introduction, I would encourage you to f go to my playlist and uh, check that out. And you should see at the very beginning, the very first psalm that we did, when we you see Psalm 119, it'll say introduction. And that gives you some really good stuff and, uh, I, and background material. I think it'll help you in a great way. Uh, some of that I do use at the beginning of each of these sessions that I have with you. And I would just remind you that this is an alphabetic psalm. Uh, there, are, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew al alphabet. And uh, there are 22 eights in this psalm. And each one starts in succession of the alphabet, like our English A, B, C, D. And it totals up the number 176. That's the number, number of verses in this chapter. Each letter has a significance along with what is in those eight verses. And so the, the theme of this psalm is it's all about God's word. And the, the word of God has seven principles or, or, or building blocks it might be a good way of putting it, to, to, com, to share, to communicate with God, to, chat, to, with, uh, to man, God to man, and to share the principles from the throne of God that completes us, that matures us, that helps us, that gives us victory. And the Word of God will do these seven things for us. And I have, and will not take the time, but you will see a lot of these at work as we go through these verses. Almost every verse has at least one of these principles in them. And so uh, this will pop up from time to time, and it'll just be good reference. I never wanted it to be too far away from me and my teaching it, nor you of pausing and backtracking uh, if there's something that you wanted to pick up on. You can see how many times it shows up in Psalm 119 also at the end of that. So the word way is used as another word for all of those seven things. And here is my summary, or it could be an introductory, introdu introductory uh, statement. The way of life is found in the Word of God. If you can remember that, uh, you've got it. You're well on your way. So we're going to be looking at Pei. Um, it's, it is the symbol of the mouth, or should we say the power of speech. If you look at it, can you see the mouth and the tongue? See a mouth opening up and the tongue? It's the 17th letter of the alphabet, of their alphabet, and it has a, the number, of, this is their 80. If they see that, the context says whether it's talking about their mouth or the number 80. This letter symbolizes, as I've said, the mouth, and it's the power of, of the words, of, of our speech. Proverbs 18.21 says, words have power over life and death, Whoever cherishes his tongue reaps the benefits. Hmm. James writes, and we've read the front part of James chapter 3 several times about the tongue. The tongue is also a small organ, but what a grandeur it can produce. Consider how a small flame causes a huge forest fire. Our tongue is just like a flame. So, this letter teaches a man to speak carefully. And now here we are within the verses, and you'll see the, the, the crimson red 
uh, when it comes off of that list of the seven things in the principle. Usually the writer will say something um, about life, about where they are, about what's happening, and then an answer is given. Sometimes the, the, the truth is up front like it starts off in this verse, your testimonies. Usually it comes at the end. And he, if I could reverse this it, and put it the other direction, um, he, may, he, he may have made this statement. He says, my soul is deeply distressed, but your testimonies are wonderful, Lord, and help me keep them. So um, that, but in this case, your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, does my soul keep them? Wonderful means it's just in the Hebrew, too fabulous to comprehend. And God's, God's testimonies, what this word means is this, it's the witnessing that we see God in nature and, his, and in his purposes that the Word of God teaches us to discern God's will for our life and God's grandeur. And all we have to do is look at the hand of God at work. The entrance of your words gives us light. It gives understanding unto the simple. It's like a door opening up and the light starts to come in. And it says the Word of God is is. Even the simple-minded can understand it and see. Ah, amen. I opened my mouth and panted. I longed for, I desired for your commandments. The commandments are the written or the spoken orders of God, like the Ten Commandments. But there, there are many, many more commandments that God gave that need to be obeyed. Jesus gave some. Jesus reiterated many and uh, that we are to do them. And so this is the, the commandment is the strong one that calls God's people to not just listen, not just hear what the word of God says, but to do it, obey it. So when, we, when we're dealing with the tongue and the words we use, we need strong words because our, our tongue can get us in a lot of trouble. So we need to adhere to the word of God and the commandment. Look you upon me and be merciful unto me, as you used to do unto those that love your name. So the psalmist calls out and says, look, turn around and look at, look at me again. He said, and says, like those that called upon your name that you loved you. It seemed that we're talking about Israel that's far from God, and God's turned away from his hand of blessing, but he did not turn away from his people permanently, nor did he turn away from individuals that sought him. Order my steps in your word. Ah, we already know, and we've run across the word, word already, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. So order or establish me, help me to be firm in your word. And we become firm as we study it and read it. And iniquity is, is don't let any iniquity, any wickedness. And as we read through Psalm 119, the word wicked and evil shows up a lot. About the writer is dealing with people that are that way, be how he's treated, not in a good manner. And he says, the thing, the, the only way I know how to deal with this is I need to get into your word and, and seek you, Lord. And that's what has to be done. Dominion is power over somebody. Don't let sin, let, let wickedness have power over me. We talk about the tongue, and it is talking about it in our language through here. We, we can let our tongue subjugate us. Remember the bit in the horse's mouth that steers the whole thing? put a rudder on a ship and it steers that massive thing? Well, our tongue steers us around too. So be, be open and be watching what we say and the way that we can, that we can have the power over ourselves 
is through the Lord and through his word. Deliver me or save me. It's, a, it's, a, it's the word for salvation. Deliver me from the oppression of man. Ah, so here we come, the evil people again. So I will keep your precepts. The precepts are the details of God's moral law. It's the higher ground. It's the best ground. It's the only ground that is of righteousness and goodness. And uh, that's, that's the goal that we look, that we can, we can be better. We can do better, but our hearts, we can be better for the Lord. Make your face to shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. The statutes are, are the God's word engraved into our heart. I just simply put. And so that's some, that's some deep cutting into our heart. And the way, once again, that happens is that we go a little deeper than we're just happy to normally do and go. We pray longer. We read the word longer. We study it. And uh, we meditate on God's word to see what's being said. Rivers of water drown, run down mine eyes because they keep not your law. So he's talking about the oppressors. The word law here is the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. But today, it's the entire word of God. But the main body of the law is in Genesis through Deuteronomy. And it, and it encompasses not just one commandment. It does it from the very first one to every one of them. And there are people that uh, just, I mean, I, we live in a culture today uh, that the that the word of God means nothing to, to means nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, people, you can stop on the street, and they've never read it, never picked it up, don't have one, and that's America. So that ends that one, and uh, as as usual, when we finish the eight, um, they're not tied off because this is telling one whole story of the Word of God. And it's like each of these is an act. I remember this, the, the Psalms are songs. These were sung. And so maybe a good way of putting it is this was to be a musical. And so this was what, another one of the songs. And then we're to stop and think about that and meditate, and then we proceed to the next one. So I've been doing these two at a time only because they come in at about 20 minutes each. I didn't want to, to do 22 um, lessons on Psalm 119. Maybe someday I'll come back and do that. Um, this is the Saadi, and it's righteous before God <clears throat> is what it's about. It's the 18th Hebrew letter, and it has a number value of 90. Uh, the Tzadi symbolizes the Tzadik. The Tzadik is a man who is righteous before God. He's devout, religious, he seeks the Lord, he tries to be honest and walk with him. Justice and doing are important to him. And so this is, this is a doing octet. There, there is the being, but this is the doing. This is the practicing of what the Word of God says. Now, the, the basis for this has to be the Lord. And so right off the bat, it says, righteous are you. If we want to be righteous, we need to acknowledge God is righteous, O Lord. And upright are your judgments. Uh, judgments, we the word uh, is off of that list of those seven things, is in the legal arena. There are only two of them that enter into the legal arena. And so when... When we read this verse, we need to see God on the throne, and we see him as, a, as righteous and as a judge, and his judgments will be based upon his righteousness. So uh, his, God's truth never changes. His judgments do not change. So that's we learn those things from the Lord. We learn how to judge and discern and order and determine things on this planet as we walk this life based on the word of God. 
your testimonies. Once again, what we see as God has created, we see the hand of God at work in our lives and in the lives of other people that you have commanded are righteous. He is righteous again and very faithful, steadfast and firm. And so we have read about God's righteous judgments. And now uh, we read about righteous commands. And we know that God is faithful in what he does. My zeal or my drive has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten. And a better word here is ignored your words. So the writer of the psalm has tried to share God's principles. This is right in Israel, and nobody wants to listen. They just, they've forgotten. They just, it's not forgotten. They, they ignore them. They just turn and walk away. And uh, he specifically talks about his enemies. And he's not talking about people in a foreign country. He's talking about those within that are his people and his heritage and people that used to seek the Lord. So the word word here means speech, anything that God has spoken, the word of God, the, the book, the Torah, and uh, anything that we know that God spoke out loud to somebody, but that's recorded in the Bible also. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. And pure literally means refined, and, uh, and it's actually that you can put God's word to the test, and it will come out pure. We, will, we can find no fault in it. We can find uh, no error. Um, God's word is pure, and we become pure as we get ourselves into that. Do you see the refining process? We're dealing with righteousness and uh, justice and the man of God. And we're getting real close to the end of Psalm 119. And so it really hones in. This, these eight verses are a real, real challenge because it's a call for us, for me, for you, to walk with God and walk a pure and holy life. It's what's happening here. I am small and despised, yet do I not forget your precepts. Uh, once again, a mark of a just man and a righteous man is he's a moral man. And precepts are the moral laws of God. It's not the dietary ones on what to eat and what not to eat. It's the ones on how to behave. It's telling the truth. It's living a pure life. It's what the Word of God spells out. Small is insignificant. And the writer here says, I'm insignificant and I'm despised. But you know what? Whatever I am, I have not forgotten the details of your laws, Lord. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is the truth. Remember what Jesus said, thy word is thy thy word is truth. And uh over and over again, people before before kings, they asked Jesus, "What is truth?" And uh, they did they didn't see that truth was standing before him in the person of Jesus Christ. Now the word law here is the Torah, the first uh, five books of the Bible, but to the child of God today, it is the entire Bible. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet your commandments are my, de my delights. Here's the do things again. Trouble and distress are around me, but your commandments are God's written and spoken orders. You have spelled out what I need to do to stop this and to get out of this. And therefore they become my delights, and I thank you for them, Lord. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. This, this time there is a wonderful wrap up here because we're ending this octet. 
and we're right back to righteousness. So it starts with God's righteousness and it ends with God's righteousness. It is eternal. And so the psalmist says, help me to understand that. And I, I can live a righteous life too. I can be on that track and try to do what is right. So thank you um, for watching this. We've been challenged greatly today. Um, if sometimes I tell my class, this is a hard, uh, a hard lesson today, not, not hard to teach necessarily, but hard upon us. Um, that I mean, I mean, people, the Pharisees, Sadducees walked away from Jesus and said, this is a hard saying. Well, it was one they didn't want to understand. And so this, in some ways, this was, this was a hard eight verses because people just, just, they, we just read, they didn't want to hear it. But as God's people, we need to hear about righteousness and walking with the Lord. Thank you, Father, for these words. They're tough, but sometimes we need to hear and we need to get tough for you. And so, Lord, bring us to righteousness. Bring us to a walk with you that is pleasing and just and upright. In your name I pray. Amen. If I can help you in any way, this is where to find me. God bless you. And uh, we only have... Uh, 32 verses to go.